already know what's coming. Oh my god, don't say hunter and blue water in the same sentence. Hold my beer. Let's cut the BS, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to get down to business. Every single day, all over the wonderful world of social media and the internet, all I hear is this isn't blue water, that is blue water, this could be blue, blah, blah, blah. blah. Cut the BS, ladies and gentlemen. The reality is this. It comes down to much, much more to do with your captain and your crew for blue water sailing than it does your vessel. Most vessels today that are above a certain length, 38 to 40 and above, are generally meant to handle much, much harsher conditions. They will do just fine in ocean crossings, period. You can absolutely circumnavigate them. Now, right now in the comments, someone's writing, oh my God, I need a full keel. No, you don't. It's just a fact. More more fin keels cross oceans every single day than any other vessel ever made, hands down, period. Not debatable. These are facts we're dealing with today. So can a hunter be a blue water sailing vessel? Absolutely it can, 100%, and they are. There are several hunter sailboats crossing oceans every single day and circumnavigating the globe. If I leave my house tomorrow in the Caribbean and fly anywhere in the world to a marina, guess what I'm going to see? I'll see some hunters. You know why? Because they cross oceans. People have rowed across the Atlantic Ocean for gosh sakes. Come on, people, get with the times. Most vessels, as I said, including all of your production vessels above a certain length, are absolutely built to standards that will withstand the conditions generally encountered on longer offshore passages, period. Now, when it comes down to water tankage and fuel, that's the same. Most of the newer production vessels have larger tankage and storage than your so-called older 80s blue water vessels or 90s blue water vessels. If you buy these newer vessels, you're going to have a much better foundation for your sailing future than if you buy a money bit from the 90s. We can look at Atticus and see how much money they're spending on that absolute lemon of a vessel that they bought. They purchased it for $200,000. They've since put about another hundred grand into it, and they got about another 60 grand to put into it before it's capable of doing anything. So get with the times, people. Cut the nonsense about, oh my God, it can't handle blue water. If somebody can row across the ocean, I'm pretty sure sure that my $200,000 Beneteau will do just fine. Again, it comes down to much more to do with your captain and crew. Provisioning, choosing the correct weather windows, determining what your vessel can and cannot handle, determining what your skills are, what you're capable of, do you have all of the safety equipment on board. If you have all of those boxes checked, you ladies and gentlemen, can cross oceans. It's not nearly as hard as Facebook or social media wants to make it seem. Now, Hunter Sailboats is an American boat builder. They were purchased by Marlow Hunter. Marlow was and is a builder of high-end, very luxury yachts. They now own Hunter. So now Hunter is referred to as Marlow Hunter. Makes sense, right? Hunter's been cranking out vessels for decades. They've crossed oceans, gone all over the place. So today, let's take a look on the market, see what's available for under $100,000 inside of the Hunter lines and see if one of these might work for you. Hunter has always been a fantastic value vessel. You get an absolute ton of value for your money when it comes to Hunters. Now, outside of the current sailing boat market being absolutely atrocious due to all the travel restrictions, under normal circumstances, you would have no problem whatsoever finding a fantastic Hunter that will last you the next 10 to 20 years in your sailing and get you anywhere that you would like to go. But because of you know, things in the world. The boat market's trash right now. But let's take a look and see what we can find. Now, for some reason, some sailors out there still look down on these mass production vessels. However, the reality is they make up the majority of all vessels crossing oceans and circumnavigating. No longer is it necessary for a blue water cruiser to seek out a slow, heavy displacement vessel with tiny cockpits or conservative rigs, as the mass market production builders are producing even larger models over the last 20 years. And with the evolving technology, they've improved their engineering and durability. So now, Owners all over the world are using production vessels for long passages. 
armchair admirals abound in chat rooms, warn of these lightweight structures, failing at even the slightest hint of a hurricane, but that's just not true. As I stated previously, given good preparation and a capable crew, these typical production vessels are quite capable of surviving some very, very nasty conditions. Now, for the trade wind passages that make up the bulk of your blue water cruising, there's literally no argument about whether a suitably prepared production boat can make it across an ocean. Most of these people that say this nonsense don't even know what the routes are to cross oceans. For sailors who can't afford or justify a giant $400,000 purchase on a so-called deluxe blue water boat, it's awesome to know that these vessels are out there for normal people to purchase and experience the wonderful world of sailing. Just want to take one quick second. I do have a discount code to the American Sailing Association. As you can see, you get an absolute ton of discounts by just becoming an American Sailing Association member. The discount is for $10 off, so instead of $49, it's only $39 for the entire year. And it opens up discounts to hundreds of other things, such as CETO and several others. Go click the link in the description below, get yourself a membership to the American Sailing Association, and enjoy all of those savings. First on the market today, we have the Hunter 41. A friend of mine actually has one of these, Sailing Puhana. I'm 100% sure I mispronounced that and he'll probably yell at me in the comments later. However, the Hunter 41 is absolutely phenomenal. It's a very tall hull profiled vessel. So what that means, once you step on board into the cockpit, you do get a feeling of being on a much larger substantial vessel. Hunters have done an absolutely fantastic job of maximizing their comfort and space on board. It does have a higher freeboard. So so this means you should either back into the dock or if going onto the side gate, you're going to need to have some steps built for those vertically challenged passengers and crew of yours. But with that extra height below, you get an absolute ton of space. The Hunter 41 has a very clear deck on board. It also has a very low profile. So what that means is you have a fantastic unobstructed view forward. With the Hunter's signature stainless steel arch and traveler that keeps all the sheets, blocks, and riggings out of view and out of the way. This is fantastic for not only convenience, but also safety. Less things on deck means less things you're gonna trip over, especially when you start entertaining people that don't know how to sail. Now forward is a double anchor bow roller leading to a deep, deep anchor locker capable of handling two sets of ground tackle. And if ever doing long passages crossing oceans, you should always have two sets of ground tackle. It's also got a standard electric windlass, which make overnight stops much, much easier and doesn't kill your back. Now below deck, you do have all the comforts of home. All the cabinets, frames, and fiddles are solid Burmese teak with a spray satin finish. So no maintenance on these. This is what we want to see in vessels. She comes standard with a 40 horsepower Yamaha. However, there was an optional 56 horsepower engine that you could also purchase at the time. Now, if you can find one of these used on the market with the 56, I would steer towards that one as more power is just always nice to have. Now, the 40 is more than enough to power it and will get you where you need to go. The nice thing about this Hunter is it was designed specifically for maneuverability in tight spaces. So it's very, very easy to handle in marinas, anchorages, and mooring fields. Under sail, the boat handles fantastically and she is incredibly easy to solo sail based on the fact it has two furler systems. The 41's fun, easy to sail, has a ton of room for all of you and your friends to be comfortable on extended voyages. Many of the innovations in the 41 are a direct result of the hunter owners saying what they like and didn't like. Now, if you're looking for a well-built boat that will accelerate quickly, Take a good look at this vessel. This is a fantastic foundation for your cruising future if your plans are crossing oceans. This can get the job done and you get a ton of vessel for the money. Up next, we have the Hunter 41 Dexalon. 
What the heck's a Dexalon, you ask? Well, without going into an entire video on what a Dexalon is, in its most absolute simplest term, all it is is raising the salon floor. This allows you to store many of the heavy systems and tanks directly beneath the sole. Now, I can go in, like I said, on an entire video on the differences, pros and cons, Dexalon versus non-Dexalon, but that is it in its simplest concept. And the Hunter 41 Dexalon checks every box you could probably, possibly ever have. Now, the Hunter 41 and 41 Dexalon are both very, very similar. However, the 41 Dexalon generally comes in for quite a bit more money. So, occasionally they will pop up on the market for less than $100,000. Now, the 41 Dexalon has a length at the waterline of 35.5 feet, a length overall of just over 40 feet. It's actually 40.32 feet. So you might, if you're lucky, be able to slide into the marinas and not get dinged for a premium slip because you went over 40 feet. It's only three tenths of an inch over. So you should be okay. And a beam at 13.25, a 51 gallon fuel tank and check this out a water tank of 140 gallons so again when people start talking nonsense about tankages blah the modern production vessels have plenty of tankage if you choose the right one now comparatively for you which one works best for you you have to go and look at these, the 410 and the 41 Dexalon. They are both fantastic, amazing vessels. I'm unfortunately running a little bit short on time. However, let me know in the comments down below what you think of Hunters in general. What do you think of the 410? What do you think of the 41 Dexalon? Do you have a preference? What do you think about the prices? Let me know if you hate them. Let me know if you hate me. If you leave comments down below, it sincerely, sincerely helps me. Now, the only way I'm able to continue making this amazing content for you, free of charge, is through my patron support. Please consider becoming a patron. You do get access to our members area with several hundred members, all in various stages of sailboat buying and getting on the water sooner than later. Give it a look, come say hello. I also offer one-on-one -on -one boating consulting. So if you're thinking about purchasing a vessel, but you just need some help, shoot me an email at jointheadventure at howtosailing.com. We might be able to get you on the water sooner than later. Let me know down below in the comments what you think. Please, comments really, really help the algorithm. And I'll see you on tomorrow's video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit like, share, do all that good stuff. I will see you tomorrow.